comes to authentic Italian cuisine, which is kind of funny because the average American eats 40 pizzas per year. I wow, wow, wow. Almost a pizza a week. Nom, nom, nom. Like a real Italian. And during the cooking class, I started to crack the spaghetti in half before putting it in boiling water. He <laughs> that was funny. That was funny. Ah! He stopped his other interview and shouted toward me. Oh, Dio, ti prego, no, no! Because Italians don't crack. Ooh, here's my friend. Here's my friend from New Zealand. The chef that made the tomato sauce. Oh, chicken parmigian and pain, man. My job. Oh, wow. I guess they have to invent ways to cook in 60 seconds so that you don't have to wait too long. Wow. Barilla sold their soul. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are reacting to up team Facebook video where he claims that America ruined Italian food. Let's see what this video is all about. Up team, I hope I pronounced it correctly, <laughs> uh, is a video creator. He's got lots of followers and he tells stories about tech, money and cultures. Okay, so today he's talking about Italian food in America. This video on Facebook has been watched by almost 7 million people. I guess some people are angry. Some people are, you know what, this guy is telling the truth. Or maybe it's not, let's see. I'll be the first to admit, Americans are pretty ignorant when it comes to authentic Italian cuisine. Which is kind of funny because the- Wow, that's a big uh, statement you made, my friend. I believe you don't live in America, right? Because you can't go out after you said this comes to authentic Italian cuisine. Which is kind of funny because the average American eats 40 pizzas per year. Wow, 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 wow. Basically, almost a pizza a week. Nom, nom, nom. Like a real Italian. I went inside grocery stores in the US, in Italy, frozen chicken parm and penne. I'm not why. And I even ate at an olive garden. Why do that to yourself, my friend? Don't do it. Olive garden is the worst. 1600 calories and let me tell you there is a lot that i've learned see a few years ago i met the ceo of barilla yes the company that makes a ton of pasta and sauces barilla is the biggest pasta maker in the world not the best the good thing about barilla you can find barilla anywhere you are in the most remote area in the world you find barilla it's always there and represent an italian pasta it's the best no it's not my first choice it's not even in my my, my top 10. but it's a pasta that brings Italy to your plate, no matter where you are. But if you have options, you can find better pastas. And during the cooking class, I started to crack the spaghetti in half before putting it in boiling water. He- <laughs> That was funny. That was funny. Ah! He stopped his other interview and shouted toward me. Oh, Dio, ti prego, no! No! Because Italians don't crack- Oh, here's my friend. Here's my friend from New Zealand. The chef that made the tomato sauce in New Zealand. He actually made an onion sauce. Have you watched the video where he makes onion sauce with tomatoes? <laughs> Please, if you didn't, go and watch it now. He's there. <laughs> Their pasta. They just let it boil as it is. And let me just tell you, that was the first of many things I've learned that we're doing totally wrong. Yeah, lots of people actually don't boil the pasta. They think you just put the pasta in the in the pot, then you can put the water, and what are you doing? You need to boil the water. Once the water boils in a large pot with lots of water, you put the pasta, you follow the cooking instruction, and when it says 10 minutes, you boil it for 10 minutes, one tablespoon of salt, and then you take it out 10 minutes. But when you take it out, you put it straight in the sauce. If the sauce is not ready, your pasta will die in the colander. So always have the sauce ready and then you boil the pasta. Italian food is a massive industry in the US. More than a million people in America work at Italian restaurants. It's a $54 billion industry. That's big. Wow, wow, wow. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of people working behind this. I had no idea. This is big, this is huge bigger than the entire economic output of most countries. 
Wow, I mean, it's $55 billion if we talk about numbers here. But to really understand how important Italian food is to Americans and how much we've changed the original recipes, let me take you inside a grocery store in the US. Ooh, I'm looking forward to see this, yeah. And if you're American, you're used to this. But if you're Italian, you might cringe. Oh. What am I expecting here? Is this a normal grocery store? Uh, is this like a commercial one? Oh, chicken parmigiano and pan, man. Mancha. I've made it too. I've made a chicken pasta. It was pretty good. But I new freezer. But also, what you need the parmigiano? Chicken parmigiana. What you need the mozzarella for? Alfredo. Alfredo chicken frozen. Voila. Voila! Why is it French? This guy's very confusing. Alfredo chicken, what's that? Carrots? Is that carrots? Peas? For six dollars you can get a frozen chicken parm and penne. Or For six dollars you can make it yourself. For six dollars you can make a beautiful pasta. You can make spaghetti agli olio with three dollars. What are you talking about? What are you doing? Feed the family with spaghetti agli olio. Or you can get a chicken Alfredo and penne. So bad. Rooted in Italian tradition. Rooted, <laughs> screwed. <laughs> Barilla, which is an Italian company, offers this. Oh wow, I guess they have to invent ways to cook in 60 seconds so that you don't have to wait too long. Wow, Barilla sold their soul. Seven in ten Americans have frozen pizzas in their freezer just waiting to be popped into the oven. I mean, everyone, I guess, um, has something in the freezer that needs to be done when you don't want to cook. Nothing wrong about that, <clears throat> but not all the time. But it's always good to have something frozen in the oven that you can cook whenever you like. I'm with that. The US has learned to mass produce, preserve, and even simplify Italian food. And our love for everything Italian is only surging more and more and more. See, in the past two decades, we went from eating about 11 pounds of Italian cheese per person every year to today where we eat more than 16 pounds. That's a lot. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Things are just getting faster, quicker, cheaper, and bigger in the US. But so it's just basically just a mass produced and um, what are the young generations learning? Hmm? We need to go back to basic, I guess, uh, my friend, uh, I don't know your name, uh, Aptin, but you know, we need um, to remind and to teach the kids about slow food, about local flavors. Mass produced doesn't do good to you. But how does this all compare to Italy where a lot of this food originated from? I went to Italy and stayed with my friend Luca. Take it away, there's no in Italian Word to say to go. He's very Italian, he's using his hands. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely Italian. Experience of shopping inside a grocery store near Milan was unlike anything I've actually experienced before. Yeah, like a... He's drinking coffee sitting up, we're having a drinks by the bar. At the beginning of the grocery store, you have this little bar that sells everything from tea, coffee, beer, wine, and nothing here is to go. I, I don't think they even have paper cups. It's all men. It's true, it's true. Now they're starting to, uh, but you know what? You have to drink by the bar. It's to be enjoyed or consumed right here, right now. So interesting. <laughs> I love Italian supermarkets. Come on, I mean, it's a great experience for everyone. You must go to the Italian supermarket and enjoy that experience. It's exciting. Is there an Italian word for efficiency? Efficienza. Not really. Efficiency in Italy doesn't exist. <laughs> Eating a meal in Italy isn't something to be rushed through and checked off your to-do list. It's an experience, a family gathering. There are no microwavable pastas because it's not about cheaper and faster. It's about quality time and enjoyment of life. It's so beautiful. You know, it makes you, it makes you miss Italy so much. You know, when you hear these this people, this guy saying this, you know, like it's so important. Quality of life. You only live once. Enjoy. Frozen food, yeah, you need to have frozen food at home. It's always good to have it. But not every day. No packet food every day. No food from the can. Guys, real food. Factory again. 
going out all the time, it's not a good thing. Go to the shop, buy fresh ingredients, make it yourself. The US has more than 75,000 Italian restaurants, but the- mm. Wow, how many of them are real? How many of them make real Italian food? 75,000, I bet less than 1,000 make real Italian food. I bet, and I'm coming to USA to see this. The most iconic of them all is this Italian restaurant chain, Olive Garden. Oh, that's a nightmare. <laughs> Don't tell me you're going this dumb girl. This is a restaurant chain with 900 locations. This guy, so these guys have 900 restaurants? So you're telling me that if you have less than 1,000 real Italian cuisine out of 75,000, and then you got 900 already fake. So, the com <laughs> this, is, this is crazy. Who is going to Olive Garden and why do you go to Olive Garden? Who eats at Olive Garden? That's what I want to know. What type of people eat at Olive Garden? I've never been. I have seen so many videos. And I know. I will never go in. This guy is going there for me. So thank you for doing this for me. But how? Oh. Doing about $3.6 billion in... 3.6 billion. But what's nice about this? Look at that. So, what's nice about this place? What do you like about that? And I believe this is on the main road, there's not even in a nice area that you go out and you have a nice view. What's nice about this place? Sale. For context, that's more than the entire economic output of the country Aruba. For those the menu is pretty huge, and if you look at the dinner options, everything that I see has well over 1,200 calories. Can you tell me, when you go to a restaurant and you see a large menu, you know the restaurant is not good. Restaurants with small menus, they give you quality. When you have such a big menu, you know why it's not good? Because they can't prepare everything fresh. That means that lots of things are prepared pre-prepared, so that all they do is warm up and give it to you. Large menus means less quality. Not in all the cases, of course, not in all cases. But in a case like this, for a big chain company like this, big menu means lots of prepaid, if not everything is prepaid. Could I order the tour of Italy, please? Yeah. The tour of Italy? I do tours in Italy. I bring people to my Abruzzo for, for tours, and I give them beautiful, freshly made, meals what is olive garden doing but i don't actually eat does the is the lasagna vegetarian or it has it's beef? not but we can yeah. yeah. marinara sauce on the marinara <laughs> marinara as my third or no that's separate I see it. Oh, Alfredo, a couple years ago, which is oh. that's perfect yeah that we're on the same page okay. thank you so yeah, much Funny. Thank you so much. Right, so they, they do that. On, oh, look at that. They put cheese on your pasta in front of you. Wow, okay, that's that's a nice touch to make it, to give it Italian feel. I already know on this table, I can see there's nothing Italian on the table. There's no tour of Italy here, nothing. Nothing. Not even the pasta. Right, that's good. That's good. <laughs> Mozzarella sticks. Okay, you never find this in Italy. It's pretty much American, but it's good. I like it. But it's not Italian. So Italian tour, start the wrong way. They also give you unlimited dipping sauce. Mm. To dip bread or mozzarella sticks in. Also, they give you unlimited bread baskets. This is the tour of Italy. It includes chicken parm, fettuccine alfredo, and either lasagna or tortellini. <laughs> okay. The chicken pot is not Italian, but I like it. Alfredo sauce, you only find it in one or two restaurants in Rome. It's not Italian, not Italian at all. I find it tortellini, so how do they make it? 1600 calories, and the price is about $19. So it's not cheap. Wow, wow, wow. $19, I can feed six to eight people, it depends on what I make. But $20, I can make a lot of food, guys. All right, I just finished. I am stuffed. Food coma, carb coma, super full. What's ironic here is this. Italy didn't make Italian food go global. The US did. True, 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 true. Well, you know the story of the mac and cheese. Mac and cheese started and uh, was created in the 1500 in the north part of Italy. And uh, at the time, US uh, American uh, president tried it when he came to Italy. 
and he brought it back, he brought the recipe back to America uh, and uh, it was not recreated the right way. The mac and cheese was not recreated the right way, the recipe was not correct and it changed. It changed to basically the palate or whatever you want to call it, but the people did and it became Italian and then became uh, Italian American and then Kraft Canadian took it and turned mac and cheese into a Canadian national dish. See, Italians came to the U.S., Americans modified the recipes, and then the U.S. influenced the whole world. True, true, true. Even Olive Garden has locations in Mexico and Dubai now. Really? Okay, I understand Mexico is not far, which is very sad for Mexicans, but Dubai? I mean, to go from America to Dubai, you go through Italy, you go through Europe. How did they get there? Who eats at Olive Garden? I really want to know. I want to get you, shake you and say, why are you going to Olive Garden? What's wrong? Why are you going to waste $20 or whatever, probably more? Why are you giving this money to these people who don't deserve? Aquí los ingredientes se transforman en generosos platillos que enamoran. The U.S. has one of the most diverse cuisines in the world. For obvious reasons. We're a land full of immigrants. But here's the thing. Italians in the U.S. started using a lot more meat in their food than they had been using in Italy. Mm, so the area, lots of more ingredients to fill you up, I guess. So it's not about the enjoyment, it's about the, ah, oh, I'm starving. <laughs> I need to eat. Because it was available everywhere in the US and because Italian immigrants earned higher wages compared to Italy, which allowed them to buy more meat, chicken, sauces, and seasoning. Right, okay. I do like more sauce in my past, I have to say. I do like my sauce, but not too much meat, though. Meatballs are so much larger in the US than they are in. Yeah, they're so much larger. See, we use it so large. I mean, me larger doesn't mean better. I, mean, I like them small so I can concentrate them and easier to eat as well, but why are they so big in USA? Drenching pasta in red sauce might be common in the US, but not so much in Italy. In some cases, some Americans even kind of feel like Italian cuisine is American. True, true, true. One of the best examples I can think of is some Americans actually thinking that pizza is American. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, I, I heard this before, I heard this before. Nobody knows that pizza is from Naples. Not many people know that pizza is from Naples. But I think maybe Italians are actually glad about that because we messed up their pizzas so much. I mean, we literally add pineapples to it. So maybe Italian. <laughs> Pineapple and onion, wow, that's an interesting pizza. And provolone, what's that? Italians are actually embarrassed associating their high quality gastronomy. Today, more than one in 10 people will eat pizza in the US. And as a country, we will spend $38 billion on pizza this year. In fact, wow, I need to move to the US and buy it and open a pizza shop. This is amazing. At $11 billion alone is spent just on pizza delivery. Ooh, wow, these are big numbers. These are big numbers. Three. Each second in America, 350 slices are. Whoa! Wow! God, these numbers are insane. Being eaten. But now let's compare how pizza in Italy started, but how it now looks in the US. By the way, I like this video. I like the way this guy is uh, recorded and he's explaining. Nice, informative, fun. You would rarely ever have authentic Italian pizza that has meat on it. <laughs> on the other hand... Oh, no, you can find pizza with meat. No, no, you find with prosciutto, with salami. Uh, you can find porchetta. Uh, this meat, cold, cold meat. Um, you can find it with mini meatballs, uh, fried mini meatballs, you can. But not crazy, not, not ribs and, and um, briskets and crazy stuff, or like a schnitzel on top, no. And you would rarely have American pizza that doesn't have meat on it. That's insane, man. How can you taste them if you put different types of meat? I mean, if I have brisket, I want to enjoy the brisket. I don't want to mix brisket with a, a pork or something or lamb. What kind of pizza vegetarian. We literally have a label for pizza. There's no love the way it's putting the cheese on top. There's no love. There's no love. There's no look at a pizza. It's so sad. So that doesn't have meat in America. A tradition. What would you like about that? Traditional Italian pizza would have thin crust. While Americans love their pizza thick. An authentic Italian pizza is usually tastefully simple with no toppings or maybe one. Uh, you 
put toppings, you put toppings. Um, don't, you don't have to say that we only have margarita. There's lots of toppings. If you come to Italy, guys, you see how many topping, toppings you can get. But it's balanced, okay? So it's all about enjoying the flavor of the dough, the sauce. If you have a white sauce, which means like no tomato sauce, um, the ingredients. One of my favorite pizza is basically mozzarella. They have mortadella. Then you have what's inside the burrata cheese called stracciatella, the cream, and pistacchio on top. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. But balanced. Don't put too much on top. Americans, on the other hand, would have a huge variety of toppings. In fact, I think we ran out of ideas when we created Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> Maybe. Pineapple and ham. <laughs> <laughs> I love this video where they go, this guy in Naples, he delivers pineapple pizza to Napolitans. <laughs> he risked his life. His life was at risk that day. Which isn't even Hawaiian. The reason people call pizza with pineapple Hawaiian is because pineapples are famously grown in Hawaii, so someone decided to call pizza with pineapple on it. Hawaiian pizza. So I feel sorry for the Hawaiians. Everyone thinks Hawaii is that. That's why I'm not coming to Hawaii because I think it's pineapple pizza everywhere. But now I can come to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. If that's not your thing, don't go after Hawaii. Side note, I love pineapple pizza. Okay, 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 okay. You can love pineapple pizza, but your video makes sense. What you're you saying, it's your choice to have pineapple pizza, but you need to know about the Italian flavors, you know? And you cannot tell me that you go to a, a fake Italian restaurant because you got 75,000 restaurants in USA, and 90% of them are fake. You eat Italian pizza, which is not, and then you tell me, oh, I don't like Italian pizza. Go to Naples and enjoy it. Or in Rome. Let me know if you agree with me in the comments below. Authentic Italian pizza is elegantly healthy and tasty. They use tasty, bravo. Usually use organic olive oil, fresh tomatoes, garlic, and oregano. Please go and watch my series. I went to Naples, I did six episodes, and I show you the best pizza in Naples, uh, the best pizza in the world, which is non Napolitan pizza. It's a different pizza where the dough is so important by Maestro Franco Pepe. I show you the best fried pizza, the best street food in Naples, how to make. Uh, uh, no need pizza at home. So it's so easy. It's so easy for you to learn more about pizza. Napoleon Pizza, if you watch my series. It's called Naples, Naples the Kingdom of Pizza. On YouTube right now. Versus Americans usually use a slow cooked tomato sauce that often comes in a jar. Sad, 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 sad. Pizza needs a beautiful peeled tomatoes there that you crush by hands. No jobs, no. And on top of all of this, there is dessert pizza, which for the sake of the Italian trigger warning, I won't even get into in this video. No, dessert pizza is popular. I don't want people to think we are, we're not creative. This is a pizza exists. It's been around forever. Nutella pizza has been around forever with strawberries on top, bananas. You can find now pizzas with uh, white chocolate, pear and ricotta. Uh, there are so many uh, different type of dessert pizza and they're beautiful, even with fruit. You don't put fruit in the oven. You can do that, but you need to choose the right ingredients. You need to balance. You need to have a knowledge in the food. You know, you kind of need to be a scientist behind the pizza. So you can do the served pizza. But you need to have knowledge. Italian food isn't just delicious. It's a massive industry that employs millions in the US. And let's be honest, pizza is often associated with some of our best memories, especially from childhood. But the US took a cuisine that started out as healthy Mediterranean diet and turned it into something with three or four times the amount of fat and calories. But then again, isn't that just capitalism? Wow, what a game, what an ending, what a way to end. I'm following this guy, I already follow him, he's great. What a way to end the video. So I think nobody wants to change this fake Italian industry because there's a lot of money behind it. If we change the fake Italian food industry in America, lots of people will lose money. Maybe more people will make money. I don't know, I don't know what to say, but I'm fighting here for real Italian cuisine. I don't know if you are with me or if you are with uh, the capitalism and mass produced products. I want to provide my family good quality stuff, good quality and, and give knowledge 
to the, to the future generations. Money always wins. Maybe we can make a change. Who knows? But today we just play it, and tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, and forever, we fight for real Italian cuisine. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was actually pretty good. I mean, he knows he lives in America. He can't be too rude. It was actually pretty good. Uh, he's got lots of knowledge. And uh, I enjoyed watching this video and reacting to him. So thank you so much for watching this video. Rather, comment below and tell me, what is the most uh, disgusting and mass-produced fake Italian food that you find uh, where you live? Please let me know because I need to learn more about this. And I'm really interested in going to USA and see what they sell at the shops. Because now I'm really worried for you. Ciao, guys.